This is Startup to Storefront. If you were to set out to cut your caloric intake today, odds are pretty high that your mind would immediately go to what food groups you could swap out or substitute. What about swapping out or substituting the beverages you consume on a daily basis? Lower calorie beverages are certainly nothing new, as diet and zero calorie options have been staples of everything from Pepsi to Gatorade to Michelob for decades now. There are some though that are betting big that consumers are becoming a bit bored with those antiquated options. Our guests today are Doug Walker and John Feld of Leisure Town, a CBD-infused sparkling water company. They've positioned themselves at a major intersection of wellness, CBD, and non-alcoholic alternatives. Their immediate goal is to be the drink that's cool to consume at parties without any caloric or inebriated side effects. Their long-term goal has their sights set much, much higher. You don't have to take my word for it though, as we're about to dive into the deep end with Doug and John. So listen in as we cover everything from why they got dropped from all major online payment processors in a span of three days, how they turned to NFTs in order to sell and market their drinks, and why Doug is currently running for mayor of West Sacramento. Now, on to the episode. All right, guys, welcome to the podcast. On today's show, we're talking to Leisure Town, Doug and Jonathan. Thank you guys for joining. Either one of you can take this. People don't know. What does your company do? Leisure Town, there's two parts of Leisure Town. There's, yes. uh, there is a CBD. Which is 20- delicious, by the way. I'm here having the, what is this one? The Lime Yuzu? Yuzu, the Yuzu, Yuzu yeah. Yep. Bomb. So these are for your like traditional retail channels. Alcohol replacement. I, I honestly look at it as like, I don't know if I can really say it, like, you know, because health claims with CBD are such a thing, right? But I, I look at it as like a weight loss supplement. Uh, we have one marketing kind of campaign idea where it's like five IPAs equals two Big Macs, five Leisure Towns equals one Apple. And it's just summing up like the calorie content. Like people don't, I, I come from craft beer and people don't realize the calorie content in a drink. Let's like, jump into this for a second. Yeah. We, we just had a non-alcoholic company come on our podcast and they just, they literally episode came out today. Mm-hmm. And they're out doing Budweiser and like uh, InBev or whatever, whatever the big players are in Canada. Like the number one selling non-alcoholic drink in Canada. And so I'm talking to him and I'm like, why aren't you unapologetically calling beer cigarettes? Like, why aren't you unapologetically leaning in and being like, this shit is so bad for you and the calories are so awful? Like, why are you playing nice guy? Why are, why are we doing that? And I'm like, legitimately, like, I'm curious. Yeah, yeah. Because what you just said is you're playing offense, yeah. right? You're going, yeah, cool. Five of these is an IPA or a Big Mac, right? And you're, and you're going to show people in a really cool marketing way. Yeah. And I just think, like, the, your stories are opportunities. And so... I kept asking him this question and it was just clear like he really likes being in the nice guy because maybe he thinks he's going to get acquired or whatever narrative he spun up in his head around like he wants them to like him. But what he doesn't realize is like if... But it's not hip. It's not sexy. Well, you still get acquired because those big brands, I think that they like to see yeah. when you get their attention because if they acquire you, you're taking... Most people don't know that these brands are acquired. We, we had a term for it in the craft beer world where it's like it's a, it's a, a pretty handle. Oh, that looks like a craft beer handle. It's owned by one of the three major exactly. players. Right, yeah, Always. right. And they like the separation. They, they like, like the for sep- you not to know. It, that's how they diversify. Oh, yeah. th- these guys would never buy them. They took exactly. shots at them. No, they own them. Yeah. Like them. Yeah. They own them. Yeah. So that's a smart way to do it. Mm-hmm. It's like, oh, I don't want a Coors, but give me a Goose Island. It's yeah. Like the same thing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I mean, I'm the I'm the case study right here. I mean, I love IPAs. I have a K grader in my kitchen. All I right. mean, <laughs> during the pandemic, my wife just we had a baby in January. The pandemic happened. It was just IPAs all day, and we had nothing to do. <laughs> yeah. Got a couple extra LBs on the waistline. Got a little little looking more good, jelly. Looking good, Jonathan. Yeah, looking you, good, bro. I'm, I'm trying. The leisure towns are helping. So we're both new dads, and you know the waistlines are getting a little bit bigger, and we're we're trying to hustle. Yeah. And and if we can choose a leisure town versus an IPA, you know it helps out. Here's my here's here's the new campaign. I'm not going to work out more, and I'm not going to eat healthier. So I guess I drink less calories. Nobody's honest in their marketing. Every, why, why is that? I find people, it so so. Silly. I found. Being in beverage and then being in marketing, I found that one, people are terrified of risk. People are not creative at all. I'll tell you, I'm the most creative person in the world. And I feel that way now. And like, I used to not say that. I feel it. I feel it. You should. I told Unapologetically him, bashful. I told bro, him just go point, lean in. Tell I, people they suck. In a business meeting, like you get, you get tired of turning down, getting turned down for like, in your pitches and you're just like, you guys don't get it. You know, you're like, you're from the future. I, I, they don't get it. That's, I tell everyone that I'm like, I'm from the future. People are catching up. 
here's a quote that I, I haven't got credit for yet, but I said, visionaries don't see the future. We create it. Right. Yeah. And like it's, you, you know, create the criticism. Yeah. And yeah. so, and so like I got kind of tired of hearing no. And so I was, I told him on a call genius had just come out. I was like, I got to start acting more like Kanye West. Like I got to be more confident. Right. Because if you're coming up with crazy ideas, you have to own it. Right. Yeah. But I found that most people are scared of risk. They're not that creative. And like, they don't want to poke the bear. And when you do poke the bear, you got to be really creative or you got to be really subtle. I think you got to be smart. You can't just be arrogant. That does turn some people off. So, I mean, I get why he wouldn't want to take all that risk, but he does now. I think I convinced him. I love how you said comparing it to cigarettes. That's hilarious. Why wouldn't you do that? That's hilarious. Why wouldn't you start calling beer the new cigarette? I had an idea recently that I want to film. It's like, it's say two girls at a party and one is about to drink a beer and ours has her leisure town. And she's like, Oh, would you like me to get you a drink? And she's going over to like the uh, blender and she, it's the same calories as like a burger. So it's like, oh, would you like something to drink? And oh, she's just putting a burger ooh, in there. Pours bro, it into shit that's, that. So right? That's like shit when you first it. said like the, the whole calorie count and, and filming no it. I was thinking the old Michelob ultra commercials, like the, you know, the low calories, but they never went that, that visceral. No. It, like that's emotive. Right? You need yeah. to do that. Well, you need to do that. It's something that's like, I, it's not sexy to drink a Michelob. Like, no, it's not. You don't right. feel cool doing it. No. Leisure Towns, like what we're trying to do is like feel cool because it's an NA beverage, but when you go to the party, right. like people, you're not just holding like a Michelob, like, oh, that's yeah, cool. You're right. or, like, you hold this, like, what's that? It's, it's an opportunity to start a conversation. Yeah. And I think that's what's cool. We wanted it. to provide, like, honestly, the, the real reason behind the CBD drink was to create a non-alcoholic drink that was cool to bring to a party, mm -hmm. right? Because younger generations are trending down in their alcohol consumption. And I don't think it's going to be in a beer. It can be. I don't know how like the product breakdown is actually going to work out. But I, I think it's if they're not drinking beer from the start, why do they want something that tastes like beer that just has less calories? Because another thing I said was light beer still has 100 calories. Right. That's another thing. I'm holding a sign that says light beer st still has 100 calories. Right. That's a lot of calories. Yeah. This has 25. Yeah. So like if it's a health, if it's a health thing, you know, 100 is way more than 25. And one, one last thing I wanted to say is like, a lot of these people that make these brands, they're not in charge of their creative. So they're either hiring an agency or they're people that came from a background that wasn't beverage, so they don't inherently understand beverage. That's, and I, I mean, maybe I'm biased, but I really feel like a lot of these brands that create beverages don't have a beverage background. So we, we have like some sponsors for the podcast and as we're either getting hit up for sponsorship or talking to brands, I realize that more and more and more and more and more. These are like household names, and I realize they don't have a content strategy. The people in their marketing department feel like they're taking risks that are too big. They don't know what they're doing, and so they just they just go back. And for anyone listening, you can literally just go like pick your favorite brands, go on their Instagram, and just see how many soul photos you see with different colors, and that'll tell you everything. There's no video, there's no exciting content, there's nothing that's going to be reshared. Yeah. It's just a super safe photo of a product. And yeah. there's a thousand of them. And you're like, that's really stupid today. Because they all plagiarize other people's ideas. Like they see what other people in the it's industry safe, are doing. To your point. Exactly, yeah. But that's what gave me like the, the thing of like, oh, these, most brands don't have no idea what they're most doing. Most brands don't have a face either. And, and what we learned too very early is like we're, we're young in business. We're both in our 30s, but we're, we're new to being like entrepreneurs. So we've relied on advice from older successful people. And like, oh, hire this agency, hire that agency, 50 grand, 70 grand, 30 grand. After like seven of them, we we're just like, dude, you guys don't know what you're doing. You have no clue about our voice, what we're trying to create. We're just going to do this ourselves. Yeah, right. And once we started getting them, that mindset of like, they're no different than us. They don't know more than we do. You can go on YouTube and find everything you want to find out today. If we want to learn something, we learn it, we do it. Once we got that mindset, we have like this. It was like that golden, mo like an aha moment of just being like, wow, we can, we can do anything. And there's no, there's no limits. Like yeah. who cares if we piss someone off or get a cease and desist? Yeah. We got to win. Good. Collect them. <laughs> we got to cease and desist. Get like, a tattoo every time you get We got to cease and desist that, from a, say, a festival in uh, India. If you know what what it, were they mad about? The we'll, we'll get into the okay. utility yeah, part yeah, of yeah, what yeah. we stood with Leisure Town to solve a problem. Okay. But, um, yeah, it's, it's been an exciting ride. And we're, that was like we're, four days ago. Yeah. That was fun. Oh, recent. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Let's jump in. I, I, I was, yeah. like, was going to say, like, let's take the opportunity. Yeah, so Leisure Town, we've been working on Leisure Town for the last two, three years, just developing, you know, the palette of the, the taste, the 
the branding, everything that goes in and out. We have some really great partners in like the celebrity space with Rob Deerdick and Diplo. Rob, okay. Rob helped us found it. Yeah. And so right nice. we've, we had this great, I hear he's a legend by the way. He's, he's, like, he's, he's like, cool. he's so on it. He's like the coolest dude I've ever met. I heard that. You know, when sharp, he's, super sharp too. So creative too. Finger on the pulse type guy. But really he's, understands uh, he's it. as cool in person as you would think. Like he's not, you meet, so, so they say like don't the meet your persona is actually him. Yeah. They okay. say don't meet your heroes. Right. But yeah. like, I mean, I grew up watching all the shows. Yeah, yeah, Robin, yeah. Robin Big was classic. Dude, classic. I still want a skateboard park. I don't yeah. even skateboard. I just want yeah. to build one <laughs> in a building and, and just fuck with it. Yeah, and to, and to be able to, <laughs> in the future, I would have never thought to be able to like spitball marketing concepts with the guy, you know? And he's like, he's brilliant. He's a uh, and he loves Doug. He loves Doug. <laughs> he's uh, that's what's up. It's I'm a little jealous, but he he loves <laughs> Doug. He's really cool. It's because he's super creative and like yeah. honest and like. There's ways to take risk that reduce the risk, right? If, if you're being subtle, if you're doing it right, to us, like when you say some of these concepts, if you do it right, in my opinion, I don't think it's that risky. Yeah. But if you do it, like, if you go a little too hard, it's like, come on, that's too risky. There's a fine line, right? And so we had this, this build out. We were planning it for, I mean, essentially years, right? To get this January 1, 2022 launching with the CBD. Yep. And Doug, you can take the... Beginning of December, we were talking with Rob and we had the whole team on the call and we're like, hey, we want to launch January 1. I know this is like a tall order. I was like, but our cans are going to be ready. We'll have our third party fulfillment partner ready to go. We can do it. I was like, it's January 1. It's dry January. We're doing ourselves a disservice if we're not able to launch in time. And uh, January 1, I think we all got COVID. So it turned oh, into like January 5th. Same. <laughs> we all were sick. We all got that. Omicron. I got COVID three times. Oh, damn. I'm like damn, on the Hall bro. of Fame right yeah. now. I'm on the leaderboard. Wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Jeez. Yeah. Crazy, right? So I got Omicron. <laughs> <laughs> That's so crazy. Yeah. That's unheard of. Yeah, gnarly. And I'm doing great. Was it like Delta, uh, Omicron, <laughs> and... Like, every own, Greek yeah. letter, dude, I got it. <laughs> yeah. He got it before it was like really a thing, too. Like, uh, he got it early. Are I actually early zero? adopter? I might be patient <laughs> zero. Zero. I'm negative <laughs> one, man. No, I'm an early adopter. That's hilarious. Uh, no, uh, actually, the, the most sick I got was before COVID was cool. It was still like a myth. And uh, my, my other partner, Eli, we, we own a coffee company. We were up and down the Pacific Northwest coast. We had a big uh, event in Seattle and we had a big event in uh, Portland, but there's a specific county. I forget the name of the county. It's like a smaller county. And um, a bunch of the dudes there were like super sick. And these are like the manliest men you've ever seen. Like one dude, I love him. He scares the hell out of me. Like if I saw him in an alleyway, he'd scare the shit out of me. It's a firefighter owned and operated co coffee Got company. It. Okay. So you think of like yeah the burliest yeah, firefighter. Yeah, the he's, he's the coolest like the calendar dude. Calendar guy. But yeah, his yeah. head's like his head's <laughs> tatted. He's all tatted, and he was super sick, and he wouldn't admit it. And I was like, "You all right, dude?" He's like, "No, nah, I'm fine. I'm fine." By the time we left, so it started in Seattle, and then we we're down in Oregon. By the time we were hitting the road back to California. I was like, dude, I don't feel good. He's like, yeah, I don't. He wouldn't admit it either. And he's coughing up a storm. And he's like, I'm fine. Uh, I'm fine. I'm like, dude, something is wrong with us. COVID, nobody was saying it existed yet. And I was sick for two weeks. It was actually kind of crazy because it allowed me to have two weeks off from my real job at the time. And that was the catalyst for me to never really have been employed by someone else ever again. What so happened? I, what happened in it that like they wanted they you were, back or what? They were super worried about COVID and I could do everything remotely. Right. Like, cause I had, I had the brewery set up on autopilot, like with everything I'd been doing for so long. And they were like, Hey, like we don't want to risk it. Just stay at home. Cause I was really like, I couldn't get out of bed for like two weeks. And I, I think I got a COVID test, but COVID had just hit the new server. Right. And the test and, sucked. And, and it was negative. I did get it three other times after that, yeah. which is hilarious, but that was the most sick I'd ever been in my life. And so that kickstarted like two weeks off. I'm not going into work where I could really focus on all my projects. That was it. I kept working for like six months and would go in occasionally, but like that was, that was the catalyst. I mean, that's incredible that you were able to focus on other projects or even do any kind of work while sick with COVID. I mean, most people just like sit on the couch, watch some Netflix and call it a day. Yeah, and, I, and I know we're going to the Leisure Town story too, but I think like the 2020 year was one of those like pivotal times, I think, in the country, especially for Doug and myself, where you realize that you don't have like a safety net. You know, your company, your job, like your nine to five or whatever it is you're doing, like you can't rely on that. Right. And it really inspired 
I mean, I have two kids, a wife, mortgage, like Doug has a newborn son. I mean, like when you become a father, it changes everything. Yeah. And I was just tired of relying on other people. And I think that's what we, that's what we've been able to really quit your jobs, kids. And, yeah, and, exactly. And, well, and he brought up a good point and I don't want this to come off as bro, a, Brie Brash, bro. It's your, well, it's your I got so bro. much respect for like, I couldn't have gone back to work where I had to wear a mask every day. So like you go to somewhere as simple as a restaurant or a grocery store and people are wearing a mask all day. Like that's tough. Yeah. My, I can't smell my breath for that, that long. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's nice to be able to take it off and have the ability to like, have that control yeah it's just like it's you got to breathe to survive it's making it more difficult so for them to do their jobs like that that's that's tough for a long time i had these like philosophical thoughts that like no human should ever be in an office i really believe that for years 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 I like that. and i was like people have dogs if you have a dog what do you do you feed it in your house you tell it when to go outside it poops you pick it up it shows you love when you want love that's basically what an employee is that's how I looked at it. And it was like really fucked up and I couldn't not see that. And then when I'd go to like Google's campus, I'd be like, oh, they got volleyball courts here and swimming. I'm like, do you not see what the fuck is happening between the, your dry cleaning, your barber shop? Like you're a dog. You're just a domesticated human and they've tricked you by, by giving you a big salary and, and you think you're winning, but your six figures is not winning in any capacity. You're just in a fucking pond trying to swim, waiting for the current, thinking it's going to change. And you're just a loser with no soul, with nothing. And then COVID hit and I was like, fuck yeah, this is it. Everyone's going to get it. By whips we make slaves, by gifts we make dogs. That's the best quote I've ever heard. There you go. Right? And those little gifts, yep. they're going to do everything you say because they've got the laundry. They've got yep. the volleyball. It's amazing. Yeah. It's amazing. It's a fucking retirement home Life for, can't for get very better. talented people. Yeah, right? Yeah. yeah. And a lot of people, like we're saying people are risk averse. That's a great life for a lot of people. It's not. Right? <laughs> it, it is, though. It, it, for it's, some it's people. It's soul suck. I, I hear you. It is soul sucking. I hear you. But, like, some people, not everyone has soul. Everyone has a soul, but not everyone has soul. That's what Leisure Town's about. We have. Getting people to chase soul. I want. Follow your soul. So many times I've said we're the first beverage company, in my opinion, to have a soul. Like, a lot of the marketing for the CBD I do with this suit on that I wear. I wore it on the last podcast. I, should, I was going to, and I was like, no, I'm not wearing it today. He's uh, actually running for mayor, though. Of West Sacramento. Yeah. Are you really? Yeah. Oh, That's oh, nice. Up. Because we can't advertise, like you said, right? CBG yeah. can't really advertise. So we're not, we don't have the same resources to advertise this as we do any other brand that we've ever done. You can't do the paid social marketing, which is like right. everywhere, right? Even right. Though, even though we've seen diminished returns. But like, how do you get press in a crowded space? Running for mayor. I like it. Because I'm the mayor of Leisure Town. What's so your like, platform? You good, 2022. You good. Yeah, you good? <laughs> right. That's what me and Rob came up with. <laughs> How many people? Is it? Is it like, a, is there three? How many candidates are there? Uh, I don't know. There There's was one, one lady and she's got like a hundred Instagram followers. So I think oh, Doug nice. can get her. You get the young oh, vote. Oh, wow. Yeah, that's awesome. The modern vote. Right? Yeah. And even if I lose, it's fun, right? Like, yeah. Yeah. But I, my dad was like, what do you do if you win? I'm like, I'm the mayor. What do you mean? <laughs> <laughs> Run in stride. I've had, I've had calls with I've had calls with politicians and like, I had a really cool call with, uh, his name's Ian Calderon, and uh, he told me a lot. It was super eye-opening about, like, how it actually works, and he was like, you know, don't worry if you do win. He said every mayor has a full-time career, yeah. so you could do it. And he was like, it sounds crazy enough, I think you could actually win, so I'm like, cool, let's do it. And I think what we've learned, too, it's like, I know fake it till you make it kind of has a bad vibe to it, but, like, we've been in meetings that are way over our heads, talking to people who we should not be in the same room with, by any means and you just got to fucking fake it you just got to believe in yourself and know that you're smart intelligent and you can bring something to the table once you get over that like hierarchy and mental block yeah it's just you can like there's like a stratosphere that people are just need to go through and realize like oh my crazy is the shit that's gonna light this world on fire let me go do let me go, let me dig deeper into that to, to that but society fucks that up for a lot of people and to that point there's a lot of there's a lot of pushbacks. We yeah. had a huge pushback right after we got better from COVID. Our payment <laughs> yeah, yeah, this is processor, we launched on Shopify. Yeah. Shopify dropped us. PayPal dropped us. They can do that? So, because we're CBD. So oh, What the fuck? Hold on. All the compliance was there. You have to fill out uh, a hemp attestation form. We did that. There's not even really a mention of CBD. It's a hemp beverage, right? Right, right. We're working with the most compliant partners in the command space, 
the emulsion supplier. Like we are working with the best in the business. Um, I had to get those manufactured in Florida because they had the highest third party like QA, QC. Mm. The freight on those was insane, yeah. right? Yeah. And so we're working with the best people. So I've got my product. I'm like, cool, it's time to sell. Let's go. Soft launch. And we're ready just to tap into our main investors, Diplo and Rob, to start helping us market this, right? We have a marketing plan, everything. And then uh, first day, Shopify just goes, nope. I was like, oh, cool, cool, cool. I'll just go through Stripe payments. Yeah. Stripe goes, nope. And the next day, PayPal goes, nope. So we had been working on a high-risk merchant account for, took way too long. We were at like six weeks, seven weeks, eight weeks, where it's like we're getting all your bank information. Crazy to sell something that, do you feel high? Do you feel sick? You feel like, great. You feel great. <laughs> and like that is way healthy. Like why can a child You're buy from a, the future. Why can a child buy a Coca-Cola? Right. There you go. Cigarettes. Because it's established and we haven't gotten there yet. And that's the, a Coca-Cola has like 43 grams oh, of yeah. sugar. It's all yeah. my dad will drink. I finally sold him on these. I'm like, Dad, come on, just drink. It's like less sugar. Come on. You're not going to work out. Yeah. You're not going to eat healthier. Let's reduce the calories wherever that's we can. That's so crazy. This is, yeah, this is your marketing. This but, is so I, good. but I can't sell that. So we'd been working to get our high-risk merchant account for way too long. And then that's where our buddy... During this time, like, the, the great thing about my relationship with Doug and our partners here is I've been doing a lot of the creative, right? So kind of once the creative's done, you know, we can, I can take a step back and look at other projects. I was doing a branding kit for a payment processing company and just started talking to them about crypto, NFTs, things like that. We're starting this conversation and Doug is my crypto savant. Like if I have a question about crypto, I always ask him. He's very hip to the space. I'm new to it and I'm coming in, you know, just pandemic was great because I got to learn and see just- Buy high, sell sober. I heard that joke last night. From <laughs> store. I buy high, sell low. <laughs> Yeah, it's, it's a uh, <laughs> nice, <laughs> this is the way. Yeah, this is the way. <laughs> and it's like, Doug is, is famous in our group for like, do everything that Doug doesn't do. You call, know what I mean? Like I'm from the future. I call it early and then I don't wow. do it. And then I <laughs> listen to his advice because it was great advice. But if he does it, do the opposite or right, do it, right, vice so versa. Funny. Always sell to early. And so too. we started thinking about NFTs. I, I, right when this whole thing happened with the payment processing, I was going to Vegas for a UFC event and got to meet some really cool guys out there who were crypto developers out in Miami. And we just started hitting it off instantly. That same time, I'm working with this same group about the payment processing, talking about NFTs, and then we just came to the conclusion that the way we can sell Leisure Town is through an NFT. Yeah. So we're not gonna go through the traditional payment processing issues. We're gonna sell a digital product, which is an NFT, we're going to be able to use a credit card, so a fiat transaction that doesn't have any gas, that doesn't have any fees. The NFT gets airdropped to your wallet, and as the utility that we, we bring, you get a 12-pack variety of Leisure Town. So by selling a digital product... That's what's up. Yeah. That's what's up. That's I like incredibly it. creative. It I was. Like it. Let's go. It was one what's of those... What's the NFT, like, though? What is it? So it's, it's a license. license to chill. It's a license plate. It's a license plate. Stay oh, golden. Let's fucking go. And there's 200... Or I love it. 2,500 varieties. Okay. What we're trying to do is... So it started out, okay, this is a great way to do it. Digital product, NFTs. All I've been thinking about for the last six months, eight months, was how do NFTs become popular? It's all about utility. Yes. It's going to, it's, we're working right now. We were able to form another company called Dropped. And Dropped, what that is basically, is bringing Web 2 businesses into Web 2.5. Yeah. Not Web 3. We're not going to go full, but we're going to get you, my grandma, Doug's grandma, into Web 2.5. How do you do that? What do you, what do you do? Baby steps. Yeah. Cause we, we, we have stuff like that caters what? to a Web. wallet. Like what, what's, what's, yeah. So we're going to, we're going to have wallet, education, wallet, marketplace. education, marketplace, utility. It's going to be the next wave of CRM marketing, text message, email, but we're going to do it tastefully where I'm in control, not the business. My emails has 6,000 unread emails. My text messages have 30 just because of all this stuff that's coming to me. But imagine NFTs get to the place where you get to choose how you're getting stuff delivered to you. But then you also get the collection element and you get rewarded and there's gamification. That's what we're trying to bring. And that all came from figuring out this Leisure Town solution. Everybody loved the McDonald's Monopoly game, right? You got to gamify the world. There's brand loyalties dying off with the boomers. We know that, right? Like brand loyalty kind of dies off and people's attention spans are 
like that now. And we think it's up to the brand to be almost like a better host to their fans, right? You turn your fans into evangelists by kind of celebrating them, right? Right now it's like the brand's in the center, but we think the consumer should be in the center, right? It's like this consumer-centric kind of platform. Yeah. And uh, reduction of apps, like there's way too many apps. Like the last thing we want to do is keep downloading apps that just go to the back page to die. So it's like, how can we create something that's like a consolidation of all this, puts the consumer first? And uh, why do I got to give you my address to buy like an audio book? Like, why do you need all that information? Like, sure. Can I just give you some money? Yeah. yeah. It's less intrusive. So um, walk me through it. Walk me through the, uh, so I go on your website. Yep. I'm assuming that's where I start. So we yeah, so, a <laughs> okay. yeah, it's leisuretown.io. Right. Yep. Okay. And so you go click the NFT. It shows all the utility, our roadmap of utility that we're trying to bring. Okay. So it comes with the 12 pack variety um, of leisuretown CBD, 25% off merch for life. We're going to have pop-up events. I like um, it. How much is it? How much is it? It's a hundred bucks. $99. $100. Okay. So on top are What's the crypto. Do you pick a crypto? No, it's all so it's credit card. Credit card. Yep. Okay. Okay. So it's all through a credit card. Post transaction, you get an email where you input your wallet address. We're gonna clean this up to where it's almost instantaneous with checkout. And then and then the, you drop the NFT. Mm -hmm. And then we drop the NFT. It's all on okay. Polygon to reduce. It's okay. automatic, so it's okay. production of gas. Right. Gas is crazy. And so with this not, NFT, not on Cardano, it's not. Yeah, <laughs> that's true. And with this <laughs> NFT, you know the the price for a twelve I don't think pack we could variety. Do this on Cardano though. No, not yet. No. After shipping is. What is it? 60 bucks? Yeah. It's 60 bucks. So we're adding that little 40 bucks on top for the utility that we're trying to bring. You know, the events, the things, the cease and desist we got from the uh, festival in, in Indio, which we won't name. <laughs> I don't even know if you can even say that. Yeah, right. yeah. <laughs> um, Just we, some festival out there. Yeah, yeah, we were giving away two tickets. Um, and so they hit us with a cease and desist very quickly. We wanted but, to reward. Oh, why? Oh, wait, no one can give away tickets to that festival? No, uh -huh. they said we we're like... Um, I mean, you can, and you can, but what I think fuck? we might have had an accident. I think Doug actually tagged them I, in the post. So I think I why did. wouldn't you, though? <laughs> I know. I was, why are I they... I think that they would want any It's like UGC. Of, what was their, what was their issue? Yeah. They're just super, super protective of their brand. They don't want anyone to benefit D, off... D uh, told him. Okay. We so, have a really good friend out here in LA. Um, he's been a mentor of mine. D. Murthy does the Five Four Group, Young and Reckless group brands chat. out here. Group chat is a podcast he's on. He was like, "Dude, you guys are gonna get a cease and desist like instantly." Right? I he didn't said believe it. it. Yeah. I was like, "They're not gonna find us. We're not big enough yet." And, and they literally, <laughs> like that. they're on it. Mm -hmm. So he, D. knew. Yeah. So, and I think that was one of the things we learned. That's it's so like, interesting. I mean, that's one of the things. Like, dude, we'll we'll do it. We'll give it away. Give us a cease and desist. Cool. Like what's the worst thing that could happen, right? But I think what's we're learning, especially with the Leisure Town NFT side, is it's all about community, yeah. right? It's why are you gonna pick my beverage up versus something else? And it's because you feel a part of it. With the NFT thing, it's also a cool thing to have in your wallet. You know, if we do a pop-up concert down here in LA, we wanna have NFT holders get access, but then also have an outlet for people who just wanna come scan this QR code and get a proof of attendance NFT. So it's almost like your ticket that lives in your wallet forever that says, I went to this event and add utility to that. You went to all 10 events and you've got proof. You win something. That's and it, Park Place. It, we, yeah. we came up with this and idea. It's like, Doug, what's your line about desperation? Desperation drives innovation. And we were desperate and we had to figure this out. We did it and it's opened up a lot of doors. We have, we've had meetings with two professional sports teams up in Northern California about becoming the NFT partner for them. We're trying to work out with some of the biggest online retailers in the fashion space. I mean, it's it's really exciting how solving this problem for Leisure Town has opened up doors for us in, in the NFT world. A lot of people are thinking like this, right? This is direct mail went to email, went to SMS, and it's going to go this way. Yeah. When, we don't know. And we say two and a half because... Well, we fully believe in Web3, we believe that there's like an intermediate step for some people. Some people aren't ready to dive fully into Web3, and that's fine. Like the credit card, that the credit card kind of tech, that's a simple bridge for them, right? Because you have all the protection of using a credit card, which is really nice for the consumer. And it's the simplest transaction ever. Like we're, we're, we've got a project that's more Web2.5 than Web3, and this is a perfect like example where maybe they're not trying to buy with, you know, 100 ETH, this product, but... You know, they can use a card. It's a lot of money, so it'd have to be like a ACH or something. But So the sports teams that you were talking with, 
is this just solely NFTs that they're interested in, or are they interested in also selling Leisure Town at their arenas? So we did talk about the beverage, and p there's potential, but since it's still yeah. CBD, right, right. and they were telling us this sporting league, this association, they're like really strict. One drink to get approved, it has to get sent to all the owners oh, or a representative of all, of all the owners, yeah. and they all have to kind of be like, okay, do we improve this ingredient? It'll be here. Um, but, but I took like with leisure town hemp specifically, like direct to consumer beverage is a tough model because shipping is a mother, right. right? It's the bane of my existence. Shipping is the worst part of all of this. Like it increases your costs so much and then they get lost. Like they, some, like at least 15% get lost. That's incredibly high. It's Cause in, you're in the mafia. Falls off the truck. Falls yeah, yeah, yeah. off the truck. Yeah. No, to the TVs. <laughs> it's a cra and maybe it's just not good enough procedures set up for this new product. I don't know. I mean, we've been shipping for like three Who years. Who do you now. use? We use a 3PL company. You should use Anabis. Have you heard of Anabis? A N U B I S? No, N A B I S. N A B I S. Oh, for the cannabis? For your product. I thought they only did cannabis. They do They do this too. They do hemp? Yeah. Oh, what? We had them on. Yeah, yeah. Uh, two guys, right? Yeah. June. Yep. He had mentioned. I don't know if it's in the podcast, but he had mentioned like they're, they're, they were branching out at the time into other product lines really? because, because they just saw the opportunity. We have this. In, they have the whole setup. They have the warehouse. They have the yeah. thing. They have the tech. It's just, it's just licensing, right? Like, yeah. It's crazy that you can't sell these at a dispensary anymore. Really? Yeah. Why I is would that? think that would be the one place that you could sell these like out of anywhere else. Yeah, no, because there's no cannabis, no, no THC in it, I guess. I don't know. It's adjacent. Yeah, right. <laughs> But no, but at least you can find it in more traditional channels. And like the reason why the cannabis beverage format is so small right now relative to other formats is when this format is at like a Safeway, mm -hmm. it's going to be massive. But like all the like investor projections, like they overshot beverage pretty, pretty bad. And I don't know. I don't know why that was. It hasn't taken off like people thought. We're starting to see like indications that why people are turning super bullish, but like it's an extra stop for a lot of people. Like I don't smoke cannabis. Like I, I, I drink it. I will smoke it. I just, if I smoke it, I get too, too high, you know, like, but if I drink like low dose like this, I can actually like work up to my optimal high. Like three of these, I feel amazing. It's the best. It's the best. I'm not like that legacy consumer where I need a lot. But like a little bit, I feel great. So these will be in dispensaries. Those are in like some actual retailers in, in Northern California. It's doing well. But once you're able to buy this and not have to take that extra stop, and I don't know how long that's going to be, right? We're all waiting on Fed legal. Yeah. But like I think this category booms. And the reason why we went with two and a half milligrams and like a lower dose format when you're seeing like the fives and the tens and then you'll see like the 100 milligram like twist tops. So like the multi-serve where you're supposed to take 10, 10 milligram servings, but some guys just like just down it slam all. it. Wow. I'd be in the hospital. Um, That's a lot. But I'm bullish on like this, this uh, ratio specifically because look at the American light lager category. It's the biggest beer category there is. And that's never going to change. We say less is more. And I say you don't drink one beer to get drunk. So why would you drink one drink to get high? Right? right. Like, so I think once legalization eases up and you're able to buy this at more places and right now it's just tough. Like you're selling this, which is heavy and it takes up a lot of space or you can sell dabs in a packaging like that for like a hundred bucks. So the distributor has to make a call. They're going to sell what's easier. So it's been slow, but we're finally there. I'm super excited. Like I love the drink. Um, it's my favorite high. Like if I'm, cutting back from, from drinking, um, it's the perfect replacement. It's like, it's the Do perfect you ever drink. imagine where you guys have like a tap room manufacturing room, something outdoor, yes. your NFT is part of it, Diplo's yes. there doing a thing, yeah, yeah. how do you get in, you're an NFT holder, yeah. the We're, whole vibe? We have a vision of... Bro, build like four of those. You got a skate park in the back. One in India, like, one in India, one in LA, yeah. one in San Diego. Yeah. Like in, the, you Crush. know, have you been to like a Top Golf? Yeah. Yeah. Right? It's mm -hmm. a cool vibe. Imagine yeah. there's just the Leisure Town, like where you, Leisure yeah. Town's actually a street in, like Vacaville. in Vacaville, we grew up. Yeah, and oh, so it was wow. a retirement community with a golf course. So all our founders are from Vacaville, and uh, <laughs> no way. That's so Leisure cool. Town Road is a retirement so community. Dope. And oh, Leisure Town, <laughs> it's like the biggest road in Vacaville, like links, like one side to the other. Yeah, wow. and so they were all from one side, and I was from the other side. That's and so cool. Leisure Town, kind of. And I think that the biggest thing with 
with kind of what you said is like we want to become a place where you go right yeah. and leisure town it's with a feeling it's we say paradise isn't a place it's a feeling and like when you look at where thc is today like my wife and i we've been drinking these and she was like you know what she felt bold and was like i'm gonna try one of the 10 milligram ones from a different brand and then she slowly like sinks into the couch and then tries to get up to go to bed and can't move and she has to slide off of the couch oh, and God. says i i want off this I ride off this <laughs> right right <laughs> she's That'd like be me by the way yeah and yeah. she's like and it was a good lesson and it's it's funny because like i say that and i don't i always forget to give her credit because that's a great line like i want off this ride yeah but it's like it's such that feeling like me i've i've always had that feeling with thc like we went to the comedy store last night yeah. oh, and nice. they were they're giving out free weed he won and they're like who gets paranoid when they smoke weed and, like, and oh. i shot up my hand and they're like okay you we can tell you get paranoid from weed <laughs> and so they gave me a bunch of weed that i'm just gonna like smoke or whatever and just feel a little uncomfy yeah but when i drink these i feel like i can control <laughs> my high you know what i mean like totally. i'm not doing a four foot bong rip and like losing my mind but like i can drink a couple of those and like feel good this yeah. is the unofficial drink of buggy golf so when you're doing bad at golf you don't feel bad about it right because yeah. you're just chilling my goal if, if all else fails my goal is to have like you said i would love to have a tap room because coming from a beer background the way to be most profitable in a brewery is you can operate six satellites under one license Right, so you have your manufacturing, and then you you plug in your beer to the satellites. Right. So you're selling your beer at cost, but at retail prices, right? Instead of buying through a distributor someone else's beer, you you set up your satellite tap rooms and you maximize your space and your profit. So like that's that was my background. I was like, okay, beer. How do we how do we increase revenue and profit and all that shit? I want to have similar something with leisure town and it would have to be with this to the start but with like something to give something active for people to do like a driving range i love a driving range golf courses are super expensive water maintenance but like driving range is what i want like i love to golf but like if i can just spend an hour just hitting and drinking whatever you don't need that much space for a driving range depending on how you do it and even like so, pop-ups all throughout it. the world let's build it i'm down but and the thing that this all is these, a no-brainer all these other brands what they don't have is the tap room what was the tap room I want it's to your show soul them. it showcases your your tap room can showcase your brand and think about how much you spend on marketing every month oh sick okay is it mint that's hilarious <laughs> they're different but you could thc that you could have some fun everyone, with it everyone puts this look at that right there how good is so, that so for everyone not watching these are golf toothpicks they look like made with flavor tees, number 33 tees, justin yeah. elridge former famous skateboarder uh is a good friend of mine this is his company and he's trying to reinvent golf and this is like his hero product he's got merch he's got sneakers he's got a whole bunch of cool stuff it's good too it's good and it's fun we, we got a we got a golf accessory we'll show you too as yeah, well. yeah i like fun. it but like I like all of it. Like for me, when I think about NFTs, we're thinking about doing with the artist who did this mural and it's the same concept. It's like, um, we can make the art dope art. Right. And so like, for me, it's like art first, cool. And then epic events, like just epic events at some of the places we own or not, but it's like crazy events, like people on still, it's like just madness, yeah, yeah. but it's connecting the real with, you know, it's like the, the web three with real estate and you're doing that right I see, now. I see so many parallels between what we're thinking and like i draw a lot of inspiration from like the early craft beer movement like logany just used to do the coolest shit ever they used to know how to reward their people and i've been i've been telling like investors and people in the space i'm like logany just used to do the uh shout out Lagunitas. i don't drink a lot of Lagunitas, but i respect the hell out of what they did as a brand like they killed it when they sold for 500 million the first time eventually doubled that their owner had the best quote I'd ever seen because like a lot of people would perceive that as selling out, right? And his answer was, oh no, I just want to take Lagunitas worldwide. I want to take craft beer worldwide. I was like, yeah. brilliant. Because a lot of people in craft beer are quick to say, you're a sellout, right? And there's all this pride. Like yeah. I'll never let somebody like water down my beer, like a ton of that kind of shit. Yeah. But they used to know how to like really get people excited to sell their beer. My favorite event was called the Skunk Train. And it can't even cost that much money. But two weeks a year, the KOA up in Willits, they would rent out the KOA and it was industry only. So like the best buyers, brilliant to get buyers and bartenders excited about your product. Mm -hmm. The best buyers, the best numbers would get rewarded. And then brewery folk would get like invited too. And then they would throw this big concert and like, it's the same thing. All it is is like the NFTs your badge in now. Totally. Yeah. But like, how do you build brand loyalty? It's through that. Through community, yeah, that's it. Yeah. And I heard what really changed my mind with NFTs 
is Ian Rogers. He's I think I think chief brand officer of Ledger. So yeah. The, the, yeah, yeah, the hard wallet. Yep, hard wallet. He was on a podcast I was listening to, and he was talking about like NFTs and like how like if you had an NFT for every concert you ever went to, that's a way cooler collection than having a T-shirt from every concert because the T-shirt's just gonna sit in a storage bin in your garage, right? You're going to run out of room and you're very rarely going to wear that. Maybe you're, you give it to your kids when it's on trend when they're like older. You're going to drink right. too much alcohol and gain too much weight and it doesn't fit anymore. Yeah. <laughs> Case in point right here. Right? <laughs> uh, <laughs> I, got, I went from an XL to a double X, but you know, I'm, I'm working my way back down. Looks but, good on you. Yeah, Looks good on thank you. Thank you, man. Yeah. And, it's, and it's like one of those things. It's like, imagine if like, like being a storytelling creature, like that's why we have Instagram because we want to tell our story. Not necessarily to be braggadocious, but because like it's fun to look back and see your memories. But imagine if everything you did was on the blockchain from the basketball games you go to, to the concerts, to the vacation, right? We're staying in a really cool hotel here in, in Beverly Hills. And I was like, imagine if like you get a cool badge and it's like, wow, like I was there, you yeah. know? Like you're yeah. not going to collect your room keys. Like that's just kind of weird. You right. Know? And it takes right. up a ton of space over right. time. But if imagine if you like went like my grandfather, we kind of talked about it a little earlier, but like he has the most unreal stories. He passed away two, three years ago. And like when he was older, he's getting like to his final years, like he wasn't telling stories anymore. Mm. And I lost that connection of like, man, I wonder like what my grandpa like did. But what if his his life was documented on the blockchain and then my great, great, great grandkids can look and see his story. Like yeah. that's the future. And that's like, oh, what grandpa I went to Woodstock. What? Yeah, exactly. You and got it's like, what STD there? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And it's, it, it's so the thing. It's like, maybe not everything should be documented on the blockchain. You're making I mean, an I mean, NFT for that too. It's a one yeah. of one. It's, if, a, if you, it's like, his. Those experiences, like, like I, I love like never let the truth get in the way of a good story. You know, yeah, like yeah, that, totally. that phrase, but like, yeah, like imagine that. if you could cut all the bullshit out of people's lives and be like, dude, like, I know you went to this. I went to this. We have a connection, right? I could say I went to Coachella last weekend. Like I didn't, but I could say that and I could make up some bullshit. But imagine if you knew and authentically could like relate to somebody, you'd totally. have a deeper and more intimate connection with totally. them. Well, what's, what was most eye opening to me. So like look at Disney and the pins that they give out. Yeah. People collect those like crazy. Right. right? Yeah. So an eye opener to me, I was with my boy when they were deciding to invest in OpenSea or not before all this stuff. And uh, they did. It was Smart. great, great investment. <laughs> and I was in his office and we we're talking about NFTs. And this was before NFTs really took off. And he's like, he's explaining it to me. And I'm like, that's the, it's the dumbest shit I've ever heard. But I think you should do it. Right? Because if we don't understand it, it means we're not, we're not late. Right, if you don't right, understand right. it, you're not late. Right. And you got to realize that younger generations like don't want what we want right so like yeah. so those mickey's pins for example and a, a good way that my buddy explained it was like how many people see the art in your house like you have an art piece in your house how many people see that how many people can see that same art if it's in your phone if it's on your website yeah. the flex isn't in your house anymore because you especially during covid you weren't letting people into your house yeah. most art sits in a, a hanger and they have to keep it like from decaying or whatever. So art never even sees walls, but now you can put it on your phone, you could show it to everybody. And that's all NFTs are, those Mickey pins will eventually go digital, you don't have to worry about losing them. There's serial numbers like for authentication, like the art on the wall is now cool, but like it's going digital. Sometimes it's nice to have something tangible, like I get that. I agree. But uh, I, I also see the, the benefit of, of something digital, like, like the hotel room keys, like art can be in any forms. I mean, you know, we, we have this mural behind us. We've got uh, this mural is on a champagne bottle up there. Like, you know, it's morphing. And then, you know, you're in talks making an NFT, like all different types. Like you're saying, people can share the same art. So like with, with Leisure Town, like, you know, this is a, a cool design that you've got on the can. Like, are you going to make this into some sort of digital artwork? That's Northern California. Okay. Yeah. yeah that's uh, that's uh, the Bay area. The, the bridge you've got uh you've got it all in there like you've got the mountains are tahoe the middle is kind of where we're from you've got the bridge yep and then uh there's a little homage to uh hollywood right there with the the leisure town and i think that's where i mean like leisure town like if we look like deep web three 
Like it could, there could be a Leisure Town met- metaverse, right? Yeah, no that, brainer. Yeah, yeah. and it, it's something that's in the. What are we doing, guys? What are we doing? What are we doing? What are we doing? We're doing a metaverse, Leisure Town. Diplo's holding his concert there. I mean, that's, I mean, we're, what are we build? I mean, you could build out this whole thing there. Exactly. The Ferris wheel. And but I think right? what, what has to happen first before we can. You also make a lot more money. You're not CPG anymore. Mm-hmm. Right? And, and in tech, you're an event Web three, massive. Oh, we've got ideas in there. Yeah, yeah. That's yeah, this cool. is this is I like it. What we believe in too, it's like the only way to get mass adoption to Web3 is like you said, you have to have something physical. We went to an event and it was a promoting a like an NFT and the line was non-existent because it was too difficult for people to do, right? They had to download a wallet. They had to link it to this thing, scan another code, put in their wallet. Seed ID, phrase. Seed you phrase. had to get a new seed phrase. You had to- it was like seven steps, right? Meanwhile, just around the corner, Coors Light was doing an activation with pretty girls, you know, stamping uh, koozies. A with, damn koozie. Yeah. The line was like 50 people deep. Meanwhile, this NFT probably has way more value than a koozie. The NFT could but, potentially be like season tickets. You don't, we don't know yet. It's probably nothing. But, but, like, but what we're thinking about is probably like nothing. the way you get <laughs> people to actually jump into this and it becomes a tool for the business and the user is you have to give them something that's normal which is something physical, yeah. which is the Leisure Town 12 pack. You want to get an NFT? We're going to introduce you to NFTs because you know you want the physical, which is this. As that keeps going, we believe NFTs will get to a place where they're all free. There will be those, those art projects that do cost money, but the mass people who have NFTs will have a collection of free NFTs in their wallet. And so I think Leisure Town has been the most fun because there's so many applications. We could do a pop-up here in LA, rent out a space for a night, have a party, NFT holders come or mint your NFT to get in the door. That's your ticket. There's utility. It's cool. We do it. We do it all over the world. So you said you've created 2,500 total. How many of those have sold thus far? So we have right about like 20% of them sold. Okay. As of right now, we've been trying to get as we, 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 I'll buy one. 21. Yeah. We will give a, <laughs> a promo code for your guys' listeners. Yeah. yeah so let's do we can it. give okay. a, yeah. a 25% off promo code. We right went on, on group chat and we think we gave the first ever discount for a NFT. Yeah. It was hilarious because because now they come <laughs> buy true. it with the credit card. Yeah. And yeah. It's so we true. We literally were like, did we just make history by offering a discount on an NFT? Yeah. I think you did. Yeah. Yeah. It's a, thank yeah. You. And it's one of those things like we, we have a brand and like we did 2,500. We sold about like 20% of them, which doesn't seem like a lot. Right. But what's fascinating about it is we did that with a product that nobody's ever tasted. Yeah. With an NFT that nobody even knows what the brand is. And we only had a couple weeks of marketing doing this. We had like five only, days. We had yeah. five days total. And so it's pretty good. We're just now starting to see the trickle down effect of people referring others to this. Yeah. So that they're it's gonna start and I think those twenty five hundred will go quickly and then we can start really playing around with the future. And do you have a Discord and all that? No, no we're not no. doing Discord. No, that's good. That's smart. We we how have do feel, how do you feel about Discord? No, so slight tangent, but basically the way I look at it is, but a lot of young people or just people who are in the NFT space don't really understand is that they're becoming really savvy startup investors and they're finding that out through their Discord. And so if I know that there's resentment within the group of any NFT project, I'll find out in minutes yeah. on, the, on someone's Discord. Sure. And that's really powerful actually from a community person who has never invested in startups because they're actually learning what it takes and they're actually in real time, like assessing, I assessing. Never looked at it like that. And so, what I think this is gonna like, but if one hits, now let's say I make a, whatever, hundred grand or two hundred grand, four hundred grand. Let's say I had an ape, right? And so then, all of a sudden, I'm gonna use that money that I just got for free, buy something cool, great, and then I'm gonna have all this capital, and I'm gonna go create the success I just saw, on my own version of the world that I want to impact. And so, whether that's real life, whether that's NFTs. And so I think that's that's like 2025, this explodes. Everyone right now is in money-making learning season without realizing it at all because they just think it's fun and cute. And Discord is the, Discord is the curriculum. Mm-hmm. And then once they're out, but I don't think Discord, like if I were to not launch one, I wouldn't have a Discord. I don't like Discord because it can be overrun by bots. And maybe that's just my experience in like the big Discords. Mm-hmm. But like I got kicked out of Discord for no reason for like six months. Yeah. And I couldn't figure out why. So I tried to create, um, I think somebody like spammed my account or something because Discord is like, it's like Twitter, right? There's yeah. bots everywhere. Mm-hmm. And then so I used my wife's phone and was like, hey, you don't know Discord. She was like, do you have a Discord? Like she, she asked me these questions like, do you have a Discord? 
like, yes, I have a Discord. She doesn't know what it is. She just thinks it's like this random Dark social web. media. Yeah, she's like, it's like the Reddit crazy stuff. And I'm like, yeah. no. I was like, it's the worst thing ever. I was like, here, do you want to see what it is? And I showed her what a crypto Discord looks like. And she goes, that doesn't make any sense. I'm like, I know. Trust me, I hate it. Yeah. So I tried to use her phone phone number to create one. They're like, like the IP was the IP addresses were like too close, and they're like, we know you're trying to impersonate that person, so nothing. So I finally got my Discord back, and uh, I just think it's some projects it works right. Some projects have to keep updating them daily, right? And they're driving FOMO because it's like a 10k PFP project, right? Mm -hmm. But if it's a smaller one and like. There's other ways around it. Like you could do a telegram, read only telegram. There's ways to stay in contact or you can rely on web too, like email and SMS. Like there's, there's multiple ways. In the, in the future, I think it's, it's simplifying this, right? We don't want to have multiple wallets. We don't have want to have right. 17 discords we want to use. I think that's where, and it's, and I, I appreciate it because like crypto community right now, it's like a members only club, right? You have to be invested in all these different channels to be a part of the club and get the benefits. That's not mass adoption. That's not the future. That's not my, my wife. She's never going to do that. Doug's wife, no. my grandma. But if you, we're looking 10 years down the road of applications, utility, NFTs, not even calling them NFTs anymore, right? Our, our partner in the business, what he talks about is like, you know, the, uh, your, your credit card, you know, the tap to pay feature. Mm -hmm. It has some long acronym. No, NFC. And nobody, NFC, okay. and nobody knows what that means. Yeah, nobody knows what that means, but they know tap to pay. Yeah. NFT in the future could be something different. The right? term NFT scares people, like naturally, who don't understand the space. I don't know why. I, th I think it's because they... I think it's the fear of the unknown. Yeah, totally. Yeah, it's it's they that. Can't, they can't see it. They can't touch it. So they're... But I think that's the opportunity. Like wary. the way I think about NFTs, like let's say we were to build a brewery. Let's just say we, we did it yep. um, for your product with a golf thing. And let's say there was two walls there. I would just have muralist, like do art. That art gets swapped out every quarter. Mm -hmm. We take photos of it. We sell that art on the NFT. So now people are like legitimately owning something. You could even fractionalize it because it's a big piece. We can piece. fractionalize it. We can put a little piece on their glass. Now when they come, their ticket is like their glass that got mailed to them directly. So you make a beer and it has that name or the IP on exactly. the label. Then they exactly. could. Yep. And if they want to trade it, they can. Yep. But now you're giving somebody a reason to show up on a piece of art that will never be there again and you're including artists and for the first time they're going to get paid. And so this is the web 2.5 thing where like you're introducing a new community to a wallet yeah. that has no idea what that is. They're for the first time getting recurring money. Mm -hmm. And then we're just replenishing the funds as more people come and then thus more art, more artists and you win because now you're creating, I mean, think about this. You're solving so many problems. You're creating real community. You're having real impact in a very real setting. It's dope as fuck. Yeah. I mean, I love that you said that because the first client Doug and I were going to work with in this NFT space basically rugged us, took all of our ideas and ran with it. And the oh, art, my like shit. we had a great roadmap, great plan because like this is a great opportunity for artists. Like imagine yeah. Michelangelo's like descendants, his family, if they could still get royalties on all of his artwork. And like the artists like from way back or centuries ago, you know, we're just giving paintings for like brushes or paint. And now these are the most iconic paintings in the world that someone else is benefiting from. But imagine if there was that percentage that always went back to like yeah. that artist. I'd be unreal. I'm trying to do that with a mural next to our brewery right now. Okay. And so it's city owned land or walls and I'm just going to NFT it. But the, the street artists will get money for the first time. How cool would it be if say that same art say there's 10 holders or whatever, mm -hmm. nine, say it's in nine frames. Mm -hmm. And that is featured on a bottle mm -hmm. and that bottle has real sales tied to it. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And those own, like I want to create NFTs where the utility provided is m so much more valuable than any resale that they never resell it. Mm -hmm. Right. So if I own that mural, yeah. I'm going to take the cash flow all the time. Like however you could figure it out. Cause there's still like the, the legal compliance. Right. And, I don't know, maybe you have to form a doubt. I don't know this part yet because you can't promise any profits, right? Like that's the thing about NFTs. Even though you see so many scam projects yeah. that like sell you the moon, right? They sell you the craziest shit. You don't want to be, since you're not registered as a security, you can't right. do certain things. And so like, it'd be cool if you could figure out how to fractionalize that mural. So the artist is getting paid. Yeah. There's creator fees, there's royalties. And then it goes on a can and you sell that in 
retail or whatever, or even at your brewery, those owners, they now feel like an owner in the brewery. Yeah. They're evangelists at that point. Yeah. Like, that's so cool. The utility provided is like, hey, I own this. That's something that never existed in the past. I think brands in the future will have to be less top heavy, right? It'll have to be more fair and more like horizontal playing field yeah. where they, you reward your customers. Like you give them something of real value, you just give them a 25% discount. Like they can have ownership in the, the specific brand. That's a game changer. We had like a few entrepreneurs who were like in their early 20s come on the podcast recently and that's, that's how they see the world now. Yeah. And, and it's just like rightly so. And when I think about the companies that created loyalty with me, I just think about Dropbox when I was in college and every friend that I got to sign up, yeah. which was my fraternity, yeah. I got 250 megabytes and I was so early to it that I'll never pay for Dropbox for the rest of my life. Wow. And I still don't, and I have like a terabyte, like I have so much storage <laughs> and I'll never pay for it. But the thing is like when they did it. Ahead of their time. Ahead of their time. Yeah. And nobody followed them. Yeah. Like there wasn't a single company that was rewarding their, their people. Brilliant. And it cost, that marketing campaign cost them zero. And it's the reason they took off. Brilliant. I mean, they were at Y Combinator at the time. I mean, that's crazy. And they were literally going to fold the company. Really? And Drew Houston. Yeah. That was like their little thing they cooked, they concoct. Like, oh yeah, just let, create a referral invite and give people free data free storage. And it's just like, that's the model, you know? And so all these young kids are seeing that that's the same thing. And so if you want the younger market today, regardless of your brand, you have to give them a lot more than just a 10% coupon thinking that's, it's not going to work. No, it doesn't work not. with the younger it's generation. The, it's so generic, right? And also people know they're like, fuck this. Like, what am I? You just inflated your price. Well, and whatever. people are realizing that they don't need as much shit. Yeah, right? right. Like we have so much Minimalism stuff. Minimalism is taking off. We, we went to a comedy show last night and it was hilarious because, uh, it's called the Shimmy Shimmy Ya. And they, the comics who come up, this is some of the best comics in the world. Like Santino was on last night, Maj Jabrani. They give something out to the crowd. And Maj Jabrani had like, he's a, he said he's remodeling his house or something. He had bags, yoga mats. Ten, he had like six tennis rackets. And, he, <laughs> and so some stuff where people are like, we don't, we don't need that. Yeah, like, it's like, why are you giving me your trash? Yeah, we don't want that. <laughs> so like minimalism is a real thing. That's so funny. It's just not practical if you have two kids. My house is full of fucking toys, toys and stuffed yeah. animals. Yeah. I don't know what to fucking do. So. Kids don't understand <laughs> minimalism. No. no. And don't. like I get the toy for the kid and he plays for five minutes and he wants another toy. I'm like, fuck, yeah. there's another toy. You've got to NFT it. So it it's just okay changes guys. all the time. So what's next for you guys? What's, what, what does the future look like for this year? What's the big thing? Uh, launching THC. That's right around the corner. That's what I was up this morning working on. We're getting that all straightened out really building out the Leisure Town brand and the utility, trying to throw events all around the U.S. just with our connections in L.A., Miami. I think those are two great places to start. At the same time, we, we founded a company called Dropped, which is all focusing on that web point too. Really diving into Dropped and seeing how we can do a couple of test cases and really fill out what businesses and brands need from a Web3 solution service. And... There's plenty out there. There's hundreds of NFT launch pads, right? We don't want to be that. We're, we're starting out as a launch pad because we want to learn the ins and outs of the business, what we can need, and then we're going to turn it into an NFT automated as NFT as a service SaaS business. And that's really where we're focusing on. And it's we have some great partners, the really people in the part. film industry down here in LA. Yeah, we have the best idea ever for yeah. them. And major movie producers and trying to gamify the just marketing modernize it. Modernize it. Movies. Mm -hmm. So Trailers. rather than like static billboards, there's something that comes with it. Gamifying it. Bringing or a call to action. You want to see this movie? Purchase your ticket now. It's fun. I mean, Doug and I. Like, do they get it? The movie producers. They do. One does. He does. He's the one say, who wants to do it. It's probably and he's a big one. And he's been trying to do this for ten years. The movie that they just did was. One of the biggest blockbusters in like the superhero world a couple weeks ago. Okay. Spider Man. No, it's no, not good. Yeah. Saying too much. <laughs> but okay. it. Uh, was it an IMAX film? No, it was. I mean, it was. A, it was. It was everywhere. You'll drive down Sunset and you'll see it yeah, all the yeah. boards. <laughs> um, I don't, I'm not trying to be too cryptic, but right, I mean, right, they were right, just right, keeping right, yeah. He was like, "Yeah, we're gonna spend you know a hundred million dollars on marketing okay. in the last like couple weeks for this movie." And it does nothing. It's just noise. Nothing but inflate the budget. Mm -hmm. and, yeah. and just you have to recoup that. And somehow. we're, we're going to bring. And you're not even seeing traditional marketing or, or, or modern marketing. It's all like traditional, which is like out of home. Yeah. What, how does he view that though? Like, what are, you, what are you selling? He's tired of that system. And he wants to bring a new way for people to engage with the movie from day one. So once you see that first trailer, how do you get that customer engaged and start essentially 
getting them to pre-book their movie ticket, right? And so that's that's what we believe is through what our service will be with the NFT. In the fun- so imagine what are they getting besides like is it like unlimited? You go to unlimited imagine showings. if you get first access to view the trailer. Okay. You get first access to the extended. Oh, I see, I see, I see. Or maybe we're doing a Comic Con. Or depending like, on rarity, you might get to be in the movie, in the movie, an extra. at the screening. Mm-hmm. Got it. Yep. You get you we get to go to the yeah, yeah, the yeah. premiere. I got you know, it. and it says it's it. all about this, and you can charge a low fee for that. But then you can also get user generated content, which people don't get anymore, driving people to go back to the theater, yeah. to where you take a picture of yourself at the theater with your ticket, upload it, and then that becomes an NFT that's branded. And gives the, you know, you get that connection. How about this? When you go to Amazon Prime and a new movie comes out and you spend nineteen ninety nine on it, what do you get? 24 hours. hours to watch. That's all you get. <laughs> so, like, you don't get much. So, we have ideas on, like, we could even sell it for a premium. It's a novelty, novelty item. But there's ownership tied back to it, right? The NFT. All the NFT is just verifiable ownership. And we could tie so much to that and... I hate to use the word, the D word, disrupt, like uh, an industry, right? It's a little overused. You're from the future, bro. Yeah, yeah right. Yeah. That's all we do. Everyone uses dis- disrupt in the future. Yeah, and uh, but it's just a new way to look at it. And what's really fun about what we're doing is like, I love the creative strategy behind it and how to like make this cool and, and make it valuable for both parties, consumer and... I wonder if like Apple gets it or, or you know, some of these big companies. I don't think... I'm sure they get it, but I know like them specifically, like they don't want this because web three is going to be less dependent on the platform, yeah. right? Cause web two, everything went inside the circle and it was web one was on the fringe. Web two was, you know, a consolidation of like the huge tech brands that we know today, mm-hmm. right? That's web two and web three is going to go back out and you can monetize your platform independently almost. Yeah. Right. If you can drive the traffic, you can. That's what Snoop's doing. That's and that's how it should be. With Death Row. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he just he, bought all the IP. He bought the IP. He bought the masters. He's taking it off Apple, off Spotify. He's tired of not making any money, and yeah. he's gonna play it in the metaverse that he built. Yeah, yeah. He's got a spot. And he made twenty one million dollars doing that, releasing his new album. Really? Yeah. But are people. So the tough Which part is, crazy. is, how do people pay for music? Because we're so used to like, like I have a, I have Apple. I do yeah. have Apple. And a very small percentage of that goes to the artists themselves, but like totally. Apple takes a good chunk and then that, the, the label takes a big chunk. Yeah. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. So like how do, so for like Snoop, for example, right? how do you get some 18 year old kid to pay for the dog father? Like, because they're, they're not paying for that. They're paying for, like, Oh, are they getting in the sandbox? They're paying for, they get in, included in like a live showing. Got it. And Got everyone it. in that room is a somebody and you can hear Snoop's voice because Got it. it's like a clubhouse. Going back to the and adding you can the hear real, real world utility. Yeah, he did it for 21 million. And he, had, wow. he said he had 34 million streams on Apple, Spotify, and that made him nothing, right? It made him probably like 100 grand. Right. Damn. Isn't that crazy? And that mean, there's and he's built insane. that. It's insane. The numbers are insane. He talked about it on The Last Drink Champs. Okay. And we, we gave like real numbers. Wow. Like one of Which is, is crazy. an NFT platform for music and Nas did his right. newest song on one of, and like that's, they're changing the game in that sense. I think, I mean like Apple, I don't know. I don't know where they fit in this. Well, like I know like they're the gatekeeper, right? You guys watch uh super pumped, yeah. right? I never realized how much power they had because of the app store. Totally. Like if this, what we're doing becomes an app, they, they can control everything. They can still control it, right? That's still not really Web3. So, like, they are the gatekeeper right now. So, like, I would see them not really wanting all this stuff to happen because mm-hmm. it all runs through them. But this is a – but they still have the hardware. They've got the phone. Right. they got the thing people people need. So maybe this is how Android wins. I don't know. It, it's going to get interesting. I don't know. I don't, I don't like phone. the green bubbles, man. I like my blue bubbles. Yeah. Same. So I don't know. No, but Snoop's ahead of it in a lot of ways. So we've been really watching all these, like – uh, the WeWork show. We crashed. We, we crashed. crashed. Great. And, and like the Elizabeth show. Holmes show. Yeah. And like Doug and I were like, are we Elizabeth Holmes? Like, are we like, <laughs> we like faking it till we make it till we actually like either collapse or we go. And like we were at a WeWork and it was kind of ironic. And we saw one of those like robot dogs. Oh yeah. Boston Dynamics. That would like blew me away. Cause like seeing them in like person, I was like, that's like, <laughs> it, that's some weird future stuff that, you know, I'm like, happens. I'm literally saying to this group, I'm like, that's terrifying. They're like, no, it's brilliant. And I'm like, 
yes, I see the application that you're doing it for. It's a great idea. Yeah. I'm like, but me, I see that. I'm like, that's terrifying. You can't, you can't hurt that thing. It's like just metal. Yeah, yeah. And it moves it's like a gazelle. Yeah. Like they had, they had it moving through the hallway and we're like, you can't beat that. I don't want to go off on too big of a tangent, but <laughs> if all this conversation around the creative marketing, they did it right they had the most creative marketing ever. Like they would literally swing baseball bats yeah. at their robots and just do shoot, the like, backflip. Exactly. And then yeah. everybody was talking about it. Right. Yeah. Right. Brilliant. When I think that's, I mean, going like not off tangent by any means, because if you look at what we're trying to do with leisure town, it's like, we're trying to change the whole way people are looking at this. Right. Like from a, from a, a marketing standpoint, like no one's going to hit their, their robot with a baseball bat, right? right like right. that's just like crazy marketing. I might, I might. Yeah, that <laughs> dog I mean, was scary, dude. Yeah. And I like dogs. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I'm more of a cat guy. Don't judge me. When I was listening, I like but. cats too. I like them all. <laughs> I mean, it's a. Uh, it, it's just it's it's the age of like now. You can't rest in your laurels. You can't just sit there and like be comfy in your cubicle. Like if you want to be successful, my thing is like when we first had my son, I had several times where I overdrafted my bank account. My wife stopped working. We were paying off debt from a two income lifestyle to a one income lifestyle. Scariest shit of my life, right? Literally waiting to buy groceries on the first one I got paid. And every month just like, ooh, hoping, you know, we can get there. We're doing fine now. Like we're comfortable. You know, there's still, I still want to get further. But like, there's a lot of people who get in that situation that crumble, you know, not, not to pat myself on the back by any means. I'm not trying to do that. Or get that eight to five. Yeah. Or just, and it's like, there's so much opportunity. If you can just think about what you want to do, do it. Like stop like letting someone say no to you, you know? And you learn that the people that you're working for aren't smarter than you. No, they're n never. Right. I always tell people the reverse of that. I always say, okay, let's pretend like you quit your job today and you had $10,000 in debt, right? Let's just pretend. Okay, cool. But now you had, let's just say three months of time. Like you gave yourself three months. Now you're 30 grand in debt. Who gives a shit? Let's say you couldn't figure it out in three months. Let's say it's six months. So now you're six, $60,000 in debt, but you've had six fucking months. Do you think you would do something epic in that six months without anyone getting in your way? Yeah. And if the answer is yes, then roll the fucking rock. The 60 grand doesn't matter. Dude, you're I, never going to remember it. Dude, I went. It doesn't matter. I went into debt. My credit card went to shit. Good. Because that's, I knew. That's all that suffered. Dude, it's all the, it's all the, but think about this. It's all the constructs that suffer. It's yeah. your credit score. Yeah. Who gives a fuck? Dude, I had a, I had a homeless person credit score, dude. Good. Dude. Like, good. <laughs> and I'm saying this very transparently. I just say dude. this is what's required. Like, that's I, good. But I'm, look at you I'm, now. Yeah, and it's like. I'm, but that's what's required. So imagine if you just changed your mindset from, oh, this is so painful. And I get it, it's hard, right? Because you had a kid. Yeah, and yeah, yeah. I get that. But imagine if you were taught when you were four, like that's required. It wouldn't be painful. Well, and it, it's like it, losing weight, if, and it, if, right? It humbled me, man. Like I, I literally was like, I wasn't afraid to tell people that I'm, I'm, I'm struggling. Like I wasn't like, once I got over that fear of, oh, I wonder what people are going to think. Right. Yeah. Then I was like, dude, yeah, I'm struggling. I'm trying to figure it out. Now that I'm at this place where we're close to like being really successful, like people are like, dude, I'm so fucking proud of you because like you just figured it out. Yeah. And no, like if you don't get put in that, you're back against the wall. Like my wife, I was like, you know what? Hey, I'm going to take on all the debt. Let's keep your credit score. Great. Let's just ruin me. And like, <laughs> I got a credit card shortly after it was like, here's your $500 limit. I'm yeah. like, sick, dude. Yeah. Cool. <laughs> and what it was like, but I was like, you know what? I got to get that. I got to build it back up. I got to keep like, let's get a personal loan. Let's build it up and let's keep paying these things off. And it was just like, if I never had that situation, I legitimately would be still working like a, a nine to five job, feeling comfortable, but have zero risk, but not have the opportunity that I think is capable for everybody. I know? used to, when I would go to work, I would drive the same road. It was like 45 miles maybe and i'd take the back roads from sacramento to winners and i liked my job i liked the people and like you know i didn't really have anyone tell me what to do so it was cool but i would every time i got to a certain place in these back roads i'm like i'm living in the fucking simulation i was so tired of taking the same road every day i'm like what is this every day i got i take the same road i'm like there's no way it's not a simulation right like right. that's how my brain was thinking because i was just like so tired of doing the same thing over and over again and i would just i try and explain it to my wife and she's like what do you mean like she's like i'm so tired of just having to look at the same stuff every day i don't know if that's a good or a bad way to think but like i just i couldn't do it anymore what gets you out of that mindset yeah it, it spurs you to do something different yeah well, and doug and i are we have 
a thousand projects we've started and throughout the process realize, oh, this is viable. This one's not right. And we, we have, I, you looked at my Dropbox. I have 55 decks ready to go that we can get funding on and do it. But like some of them just aren't viable at the time or it's not the right moment. And like, I remember like I worked in the creative world and I was like, you know what? I want to get something more secure. My friends were working at this copier company selling copiers door to door, like business parks. Right. And they're making six figures. I was like, sweet, perfect. I'm gonna do that. I went on the first day and I got in my car and started crying. Went to the <laughs> gas station, bought a lotto ticket, won a hundred bucks nice. on a okay. scratcher. And All I was right. like, this is the only way I'm gonna get fucking out of here is if I go buy lotto tickets every day. So I lit <laughs> every day wow. and I bought a scratcher just hoping that, cause I didn't see a future. I was like, I'm stuck, man. I'm stuck. And then I was like, I used that six months at a six month contract and I was, in the first year of my marriage, so I was, I got married young. I was 24. I've been with my wife since high school. And she's a ride or die chick. So she's been with me through all this, all this wild stuff. But I use that six months. I'd go and I'd do the bare minimum of work for my nine to five just to keep them out of my hair. And I'd go and I'd just work on my design portfolio, work on my design portfolio, design, design, design. Ended up, I got fired from that job. The next day, I got hired in a design position a design role it helped me change everything like it, it just like flipped the script and like when we look at leisure town when we were hiring all these branding and marketing companies to come in it was just like that's just the that's the path you're supposed to go you're supposed to spend 50 grand on a design company to come in and be like hey 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 we had a meeting yesterday just because we still take these marketing meetings oh my god it was it was the worst oh meeting god. i've ever had it was we were going through the grapevine so thankfully we um, just had zoom on like the no camera and the, and, the, and it was like, they were playing videos and it was like, in the DJ voice, like, like DJ, but hey. it, <laughs> it was like was terrible. And it was like, what can we do for you? Let we, us explain marketing terms yeah, to you. It was it's bad. Like, I know. And it's like, you go down that path of like every single time it's the same stuff. Like just grab yourself and like whatever that like matrix moment is, right. Of like getting in out of like the normal, like line of sight, then you're, you can do it, man. Another thing is like uh, most entrepreneurs aren't willing to get dirty enough. And like everyone wants to quit their day job early, right? Mm -hmm. For like two years, I'd work my full-time job and then stay till like midnight so I could roast coffee when everyone was gone. And that's how we started the coffee company. We got the coffee company to almost... Two were like 1.7 million revenue in three years. So like it's hard to compete in coffee, direct to consumer yeah. brand. So it took us about three years to get there. But like the early days was me. I smuggled a roaster across the border from Tijuana. Had a crazy weekend. Um, <laughs> fucking nuts, man. That was the it's one. It's not a small thing to smuggle. No, it was It was a commercial huge. roaster. So yeah. it was 10 kilo, 22 yeah. pound. So anyways, we got back. But I stayed at my day job for years and would just work literally nonstop. It was fucking tough. Like you get burnt out. We'd roast coffee at night. Uh, one time I made this m mistake of roasting inside the brewery because the weather conditions were so bad. I was like, oh, it's a huge facility, huge facility. It's one of the biggest ones because it shares with the winery. I was like, we'll just, we'll just roast inside with the doors up, with the roll-ups up. It was Thanksgiving weekend and so much smoke comes off when you roast. Yeah. The entire place smelled for like four days and like this place caught on fire. And there's wine being made, so like that's a bad look. We got so lucky. I mean, th think about when you get lucky on your entrepreneurial journey. Nobody came in because it was Thanksgiving. You can't make that up. Yeah. And uh, we're like, we're never doing that again. But that's what we do. We would roast coffee at night, and then that kind of just turned into all this. So it's like a crazy journey, but it's always been product focused, uh, beverages, and then I love marketing and I love crypto, and that's kind of how we got here. Crypto is what I do it on my spare time. Anything else we should know before we wrap? I mean, I think the biggest thing is like we we're really trying to have a lot of fun with Leisure Town. Ultimately, this is what we're we're trying to bring all this beta test case stuff with NFTs, bring it to Leisure Town. We would love for you guys to to try the beverage. I think the biggest thing we'd love to do do the discount for your listeners. So is there like a promo code? We could do 25% off. We could make a promo code for you yeah, guys. I can throw it into the beginning of the what should, what should we do the, the promo code? What should it be? Quit your job. Risky you boys, go. 25. <laughs> I like quit your job, 25. Quit that's your job, a good 25. One. That's good. Yeah. Okay. And Done. so, yeah. And that's going to be at leisuretown.io. Yeah. 
You can see kind of our roadmap of what we're doing with the utility, but it comes with the 12-pack variety. Would love for you guys to try it if you're listening. Um, use Quit Your Job 25. I love and it. And last thing, we dropped samples of the CBD drink down to Erewhon that we did oh, nice. yesterday. So these are already in store. These uh, beautiful 2.5 milligram THC, 5 milligram CBD drinks will be hitting dispensaries May, into May maybe, mid-May. Okay. Okay. Um, and that's like statewide. And why Around. do you drink these? Because they're pretty tasty. Yeah. They're yeah. really tasty and uh, consistent. So you can like, you're not going to get too high. It's not going to be that college brownie experience. Yeah. Perfect. <laughs> well, thank you both for, for taking the time. Today. Thank you. Yeah. One thank last you. thing. Oh, yeah. If you yeah, want to yeah. follow our crypto journey, yes. it's dropped, D-R-O-P-T dot club. It's brand new. We, so that's dot where club? we're Dot club. Nice. Yeah. D-R-O-P-P-E-D. D-R-O-P-T. Okay. Got it. Yep. Got dropped. Because we air dropped it. So right on. I loved it. Awesome. Love thank it. you guys. It. Appreciate thank it. You. Thank you. All right. That was our conversation with Doug and John of Leisure Town. And while you're still here, if you're not already subscribed, you should seriously consider doing so. If you are subscribed, then you should seriously consider leaving us a review. And if you've already done both, well, you're awesome. We are found at Startup Storefront on every social media platform except for Twitter, where we can be found at STS Podcast LA. The team consists of Diego Torres Palma, Natalia Cavallini, Lexi Jameson, Owen Cappellini, and me, Nick Conrad. Our music is by Double Touch. Thank you for listening, and we'll see you next time.